dying seconds of the opening quarter. Baum showing off excellent wheels, swims by his defender, and then got that one knocked down by Amato, practically at the buzzer. 15 minutes complete. These high school All-Americans putting on a very good show to start things in Towson, Maryland. All for you live on ESPNU. The North came out firing. Casey finding the interior, only to see the South respond. It's 4-3 after one. gonna steal two bases. represent our friends and family. The 10 people we can call, whatever network they're on without using our minutes. That's included, no extra cost. Oh. So then, excuse me, Sammy. This would be like the 80 million people on Verizon Wireless we can call too. Yep, also included. Don't eat it, Marsha. Save minutes and money with Verizon Wireless. Unlimited calling to 10 out of network numbers, even landlines. Plus get America's largest mobile to mobile calling family. And now buy an LG Glance for $49.99 and get up to four phones free. As the dusk settles over Towson, Maryland, two outstanding college coaches watching the Under Armour All-America lacrosse game. Dave Petromala and Jeff Tambroni. Jeff Tambroni on the right, appearance in the national finals this year. They lose a bunch of senior midfielders. Have one player playing in this game. You'll see him in the second half. That's A.J. Fiore, a goalie from Ithaca. He'll have a chance right away to compete for a starting slot. And a couple top players who aren't in this game, I think that the Cornell Lacrosse fans are like Matt Taylor, an attackman from Fayetteville, Manlius. Jason Noble out of the Hill Academy. His coach, Brody Merrill, that's a Canadian school. And Thomas Keith, a defender from Syosset. I, I really think Cornell needs some midfielders. You lose a guy like John Glenn and Max Sebald. They got to get some fresh horses uh, onto the lacrosse field. And this would be uh, the way to replenish with some of the top-notch talent from around the country. The North in the red jerseys, if you're just tuning in. The jump shot put home, perfectly executed by Matt White. Quick release by White. Takes a very accurate pass from Ian Bradish. White, in our open, I described him as the, the best dodging attackman in the game. But twice now, he's gotten strong opportunities by moving his feet without the ball. As the defense doubled there, he was left vacant. He was left wide open. But instead of staying on goal line extended, he crept up the field towards the ball, improving his angle, showing a real good game sense. No reason that Matt White can't be the guy at Virginia next year to play alongside Steele Stanwick. Long stick defender Tyler Narr won the draw for the North. Very smooth feed by the man you mentioned, Quint, Ian Bradish. His uh, future college coach, Joe Bresci, says he just glides, and we saw a display of that. Yeah, and his eyes were up. That, that whole scenario, once he got a step on, on Ferguson, he realized, uh, you know, someone's either coming or I'm going to have to plant my feet and let it rip. Bradish dumps it for Marasco. That gets away. They fight for it on the end line. Matt White comes up for O'Reilly. Slicing inside, and he pings it off the crossbar. 
And then a crease violation against the North gives the ball back to the South. Getting back to Ian Bradish, talking to Joe Bresci this, this week. You know, Carolina wants to evolve into a transitional team, a, a team where you're throwing out really athletic two-way middies, and he thinks Bradish can do that. May get his first opportunities at Carolina uh, as a defensive midi. The midfield position is very tough to go from high school to college and be an impactful scorer. Brad is a great three-sport athlete. And it really comes down to how quickly he can grasp the intricacies of playing college midfield. Tar Heels have to replace Ben Hunt, who moved on to Major League Lacrosse. They still have the likes of Sean Delaney and Jimmy Dunster at their midfield position. On the run, sweeping to the alley, it's Pat Cotter. Coming back, bouncing that one off the outside of the iron. The quick pickup on the rebound. Carey there in a duel. They play man ball. Holman trying to keep it alive, and he did not. It belongs to the North. Little back check. Kyle Carey, Worthington, Ohio. Puts that ball on. This is a tough time of night, Joe, for these goalies. Right now, for about the next 10 minutes, as day turns to night and the full effect of the lights can't kick in. This is kind of that flat lighting. John Grayley, who they have high hopes for in Baltimore, Johns Hopkins knocked down to the deck. The push will keep the ball in possession of Team North. Marasco kept at bay by Ferguson. Ferguson is a real ball hawk, a hunter on D. This might be an all-star game, guys, but the intensity certainly is here on the field. I think the South was carrying the play to the North a little bit early. They've taken on the personality of their coach, Kevin Giblin, a real fireball from Georgetown Prep, but the North has responded, and they're, they're playing well right now. Had a chance, Mark, to catch up with Coach Giblin yesterday, and you're exactly right. That's one colorful personality. A pass to the inside that's knocked down and vacuumed up very, very quickly by Chris Leitner. One thing you saw in that last possession was Roger Ferguson, the long pole midi, out of the Washington, D.C. area. He's heading to play for Brown, playing behind the goal, very comfortable with his great footwork back there. Talking to Lars Tiffany at Brown this week, he said Ferguson's the type of athlete who can cover a guy like Rob Pinnell of Cornell. They'll feel comfortable putting Ferguson on a quick attack then because of his great foot speed. South team did not clear in time. The North will get another shot now at John Camp, who's emulating his older brothers, right? Joey and CJ, both college All-Americans. When I watch, yeah, when I watch John Kemp play, he is, as a goalie, he is about as technical as it gets for a high school goalie. He is fundamentally sound. If it's a bad shot, it's not going in. Uh, he'll have to work on his explosiveness, like on a save like that right there and his quickness, but this kid is, is solid when it comes to the fundamentals of the position. So far in this opening half, Matt White, Joe Marasco, and the goal scorer there, Nick O'Reilly, have been very stout at the attack position. Beautiful little swim move. O'Reilly, south side, Rockville Center, Long Island. It's the South Shore of Nassau County. We'll play at Virginia. Look at him carry with confidence and poise. You got some height, and you're being covered by a short stick defender. That swim move uh, can be, really can be a viable move. Ten years ago, I wouldn't have said it, but, na but now I'll admit it. It works. We see it all the time in Major League Lacrosse. Sure does. Tyler Nars doing a very effective job with that long stick, winning draws and giving the North another possession now as they have the lead by one. Shots on goal in this quarter, rather low. Hakeem Lecky on his way to Syracuse. Very, very gifted in the open field. A tough cover. McKinney rifles that one through traffic. That was a tough pass. He forced it there for Matt White, and it's a turnover. Hakeem Lecky, a great story, born in Jamaica. Came over to the States when he was in middle school with his mom, lived in Nantucket, eventually uh, ends up with a guardian in Duxbury, Mass. Uh, late to the sport of lacrosse, but a blossoming talent. Q, Mark has John Greeley close by. Fellas? Fellas, uh, John Greeley, the Under Armour All-American out of Lafayette, New York. He's headed to Johns Hopkins University. It's an all-star game, but I just saw a nice bruise on your arm. It's pretty physical out there. Yeah, it's real physical, you know. Uh, it's all about, like, you know, the bragging rights, you know, the South and the North, and uh, it's a good game so far. Hopefully we can pull it off. 
you head to Johns Hopkins University, the lineage of midfielders, Paul Rabel, Kyle Harrison. As a matter of fact, I'm hearing a rumor you're going to wear number nine next year for the Blue Jays, but uh, your, your thoughts going into Homewood? Uh, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm going to be down summer all working, we're, all working out with Coach Day and just get myself ready. And uh, as far as the nine jersey, my best friend Josh Aminon is up in Syracuse wearing the nine jersey, so I just kind of, he's my neighbor, so it'd be cool. Both of us came out of Lafayette wearing the nine, so. Josh Abinon's won two national championships with Syracuse. Maybe the number nine will bring a lot of luck to John Greeley at Johns Hopkins. Gentlemen, we appreciate it. You know there's plenty of high hopes there for that youngster who the coaching staff just can't say enough good things about. This kid gets off the bus, and you see he, he looks like a college midi. Talented, has all the tools, can make an impact right away. Big, strong, fast, and polished. Hopkins brings back Michael Kimmel and Marshall Burkhart, Tim Donovan, but uh, Greeley's the guy. Maybe he's the next great All-American midfielder for Johns Hopkins. Landon Carr going to the goal here, Q, and finding success against Nico Amato. Carr, Mitty, out of Washington. He'll be playing for Maryland next year. The state of Washington, that is. 42 varsity programs. Some of the best are Issaquah, 19 and two. Mercer Island, a great program. Chris Taylor, a defensive midfielder at Georgetown, actually got a look by the Washington Bayhawks. He's from Washington. We actually watched a high school game out in Washington back in 2004. It's nice to see the program pretty much growing into form as O'Reilly does it again on the sneak from behind the cage. Nick O'Reilly's release has been very, very good. We understand he's terrific with the ball. The, the questions are, how will he do when he does not have it at the collegiate level? Well, let's see. Let's see what he does well here. Just catches, keeps that stick up in the box position and hanging up his defender, picks up that sep step of separation. Many of the nation's best goal scorers on display. It's the Under Armour All-America Lacrosse game from Towson. And you're watching it live on ESPNU. You know what I like about tennis are the rankings. I like to know exactly where you stand at all times. Yeah, it works for us. Yeah. Hey, if they rank Sports Center anchors, where do you think I'd be ranked? I don't know. Come on. No, I don't want to not get into it. Right, come on, pick a number between one and ten. Well, I'm not sure you'll be in the top ten. I'm in the top ten, Roger. Attorneys have to make some tough choices, but there's one that's easy. Oasis Legal Finance is the number one choice to provide clients the money they need for bills and living expenses long before their case may settle. Oasis has prepaid millions of dollars to people just like you with no obligation to repay if you lose your case. I need my settlement money now, but the defendant keeps delaying the court date. After my accident, I wasn't able to work but my attorney told me about Oasis, and they had a check to me in two days. If you're involved in a lawsuit, call Oasis Legal Finance. Get the money you deserve. Call Oasis. Call Oasis. Whether it's money for bills, rent, car payment, or groceries, call Oasis now. Remember, the phone call is free, the application is free, and there's no obligation to repay if you lose your case. Call Oasis now. Big baseball action first at 8 Eastern on Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell. Alex Rodriguez and the New York Yankees taking on David Wright and the Mets as part of the ALNL Showdown presented by State Farm. Then catch Monday Night Baseball 7 Eastern. The Mets head to Milwaukee. They tangle with Ryan Braun and the Brewers. Major League Baseball on ESPN and ESPN 360 Sunday and Monday. We are enjoying the fourth annual Under Armour All-America Lacrosse game. This event began in 06. We look back and flash back to the year 2007. Grant Catalino taking charge. Upstate New York product now plays at Maryland where he's put up 89 points in two years, and that's John Galloway. 
All he's done at Syracuse in two years is two NCAA championships, the West Jenny grad. Shamel Bratton right there in the middle of that graphic, 45 goals for the Virginia Cavaliers, and as exciting a player as you'll find between the lines in the open field with that shaken base. Yeah, Shamel Bratton's a great example of a midi who in year one in college, uh, I don't want to say the word struggled, but he had 14 goals. That's an exceptional year for a freshman midi. This year he blew up to 31 goals. But guys like Jack Doyle, uh, LaPierre, they go to midfield, you get the double digits as, as a freshman midfielder, you're gonna be a superstar. That's the toughest transition in lacrosse, the offensive midfield position. It's a very pleasant Saturday night in Towson, Maryland. The weather in the mid-Atlantic region for the most part of the last couple of weeks has been filled with rain. No threat of that in the skies overhead. They allow these top future college standouts to show off their wares. North against South. Holman inside, bullseye. That's where Marcus Holman's gonna do the damage when he moves on to Chapel Hill as an off-ball attackman at first. Talked to his future college coach, Joe Bresci, this week. The game sense, the smarts. He thinks Marcus Holman's got a nice shot to step into their uh, extra man offense and maybe play inside a little. It'll fit well alongside Billy Bitter and Gavin Petraka, Holman's dad, an assistant down in Charlottesville, former Johns Hopkins goalie. Good stop there by Amato. Marcus's mom, Lori, played lacrosse and tennis right here at Towson University. And she probably still could play tennis. You see her in Baltimore jogging up and down the streets, although they've recently relocated to Chapel Hill. Joe Fazio's bid with the long stick was rejected by Kemp. The whistles. That was excellent goaltending by Kemp, especially off the rebound prior to the whistle. To the way he mirrored the fakes of Morasco, never truly fully committing Joe and kind of holding his ground as Morasco ran out of, out of angle. Scott Rogers has the crease in South Bend, Indiana for Notre Dame, but John Kemp is the kind of player who on the horizon will be a standout. And Notre Dame, uh, let me tell you, they play great defense out in South Bend. Got guys coming back next year like Kevin Ridgeway, Mike Creighton on the defensive end, Scott Rogers uh, for their coach Kevin Corrigan, who's here with assistant Jerry Byrne. Uh, but Kemp is the guy I think in three or four years will be an all-American caliber guy. I mean, he's got the lineage, he's got the mindset, and, and certainly tactically and skillfully, he's the most talented goalie in this class. 2-5 red for Kevin Giblin and for Chris Sweet of the North team, a very good split dodge. And speaking of that particular move, it's one of Paul Rabel's favorites. He's standing by with Mark Dixon. Okay, standing here with Paul Rabel. And Paul, you've had a pretty busy summer here in 2009. What have you been up to? I've been uh, playing in the MLL with the Boston Cannons and uh, working camps and clinics and uh, just doing a lot of lacrosse, participating in some events uh, with Under Armour like we're here tonight, and uh, so I've been having a lot of fun. And you have the honor, you're on the 40-man training roster for Team USA. You're a three-time all, first-team All-American, two-time national champion. You're lighting it up in the MLL with the Boston Cannons, but being part of that national team, that, that has to be special. Yeah, it's something that I've dreamed about since day one. I mean, you talk about it in any sport. Uh, I think the ultimate honor, you know, beyond winning a championship is, is representing your country. And uh, so to have the opportunity to play on a team uh, like this with uh, some of the best players in the world has just been a dream of mine. And um, I'm just really relishing the moment and looking to excel in it. Hey, guys, Paul's going to stick with me. We'll throw it up back to you. Paul and his present-day Boston Cannons will be tangling with the Denver Outlaws on ESPN2 in the coming days. Fans enjoying this one. It's the Under Armour All-America Lacrosse game. Dead even at six in Towson, Maryland.
Why do you insist on following so closely? Is this a parade? Enough help for one day? Tailgating this guy a clean, comfortable miles. room for the lowest price of any I national chain is always nearby. I don't know. It's unnerving. Motel 6. We'll leave the light on for you. Section 3, paragraph 7 states that all jewelry and jewelry-like accessories will go on loan to one Mike Bachman of Hershey, Pennsylvania. In return, my client will vote for your game-winning catch at the 2009 ESPYs. That's uh, all jewelry and jewelry-like accessories. Oh, man. The ESPYs. Vote now at ESPYs.tv. The fan gets what the fan wants. Presented by Land Rover. The FIFA Confederations Cup concludes on ESPN2 tomorrow. Two games, 8.55 a.m. Eastern Spain, tangling with South Africa in the third place game. Then at 2 p.m. Eastern, it's Brazil taking on the United States. Who's going to be the 09 Confederations Cup champ? FIFA Confederations Cup on ESPN2 tomorrow. Loving the lacrosse action tonight. Fans here at Johnny Unitas Stadium in Towson and also on the sideline. Mark Dixon resumes his conversation with Paul Rabel. Yeah, and Paul, you have been witnessing uh, this event from the ground level, but also you're a real ambassador of the sport, the growth of lacrosse. We're seeing young men from Washington and Oregon here this evening. Uh, the explosion of lacrosse, it's happening all over the country, and you're a big part of it. Well, thanks. I mean, I, th I think it's awesome. I think the game's really growing. Um, you see it with this event and with Under Armour bringing this event as like the premier All-America game. All, all the best players in the country are here, and, you know, I think it's great that you have these top sponsors coming in, the Under Armors and, and the likes, the big sports apparel, really helping grow the sport. And uh, they're pushing it from the ground up. And, you know, I'm going along with Under Armour and running camps out in the Midwest and, and uh, up the East Coast. So I think everyone, the great thing about lacrosse is everyone's trying to work together to grow the game. And, and you can see it taking off tonight. And if you're not busy enough at halftime, the Inside Lacrosse Under Armour shootout, they're going to get you out there against Jack Doyle and John Greeley. Can you give us a flavor of what you're going to be up to at half? I don't know. You know, I think uh, I'm going to try to take the net down, I think, because uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not an accuracy guy, and I think Quentin and Joe can attest to that. I'm more of, a, more of hiding my stick and, win, and scoring with power. But, you know, they're putting me to the test. Under Armour always does, and uh, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm excited to shoot with John. He's a Hopkins guy next year, so it should be fun. Paul, thanks for your time. And Quentin Joe, as ex-goalies, I bet you're probably happy that they're putting in a target and not a live goaltender for the halftime festivities. So much better than the fresh meat. And Mark, if you can, you know, you might as well just flag down a police officer, maybe get one of those radar guns because Paul Rabel can throw triple digits in that nah, regard. Nah, last year at Invesco Field, all-star skills halftime. I'm behind the goal with the radar gun. He's shooting 111 miles an hour. The ball missed the net. There is no way you couldn't pay me enough money right now to play goalie in Major League Lacrosse. Different game, bigger, stronger, faster. That ball is absolutely moving. Two goalies tonight have performed very well. John Kemp for the Under Armour South team. Nico Amato for the North. In a 6-6 deadlock just less than six minutes to go in the opening half. That's the time separating us from that inside lacrosse Under Armour shootout. Hakeem Leckie dodging in the open field. The North dominating in terms of face-offs, thanks to Tyler Narr. Connor English gets to the inside and scores! English with a dive off the roll dodge. Fine-tuned isolation move by English out of Manhasset High School, be playing at Virginia. Convinces his defender that he's going to push towards the perimeter to the outside and then cuts it back straight to the tangent of the crease. It's an SAT word, Joe. I know you did well on those. Tangent of the crease, that's the blue line. Actually got away with a dive, though. He, yeah, he did. Did, did he not dive in the crease? Yes, he did. Okay. That's why I said it was a dive. Yes, you did. It was. Should have come off the board. It will next year, Connor. But I like the move. Save that for four years from now when you're in Major League Lacrosse. Legal at the pro ranks as Ferguson speeds in on a fast break. Quick ball movement, and it's just dumped wide by Davey Emila. South team in the white jerseys on the quick restart. Fanshaw didn't get to the top side there. Good defensive play. The North's uh, Tucker Durkin digging in. Fanshaw knows his role best as a crease or slot attackman. This bull dodge to the inside did not strike pay dirt. Jack Doyle 
harassed all the way to the net. On his way to Ivy League Harvard in the future. As Emila deals with Fennessy. Pat Cotter going on the isolation. Losing his short stick defender there, Stephen Murphy, who stays with him and forces that high shot. Emila bluffs the pass to the inside. South trying to get the equalizing marker late in this opening half. Mark Dixon has another guest. Landon Carr representing the state of Washington. I am joined by the Portland, Oregon product, Peter Baum. And Peter, when you talk about the growth of lacrosse, your recruiting experience, you, how is it out west compared to maybe the guys back east? Basically, you have to you know, work harder to get seen. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of exposure coming out west. So we usually come east, playing some of the bigger recruiting showcases. And um, West Coast Stars has been a big recruiting outlet uh, run by Scott Hockstad out of California, so that's that's a big part of it. You'll be headed to Colgate University for Coach Jim Nagel. Your father played, he was a Raider. What are you looking for uh, your first year in Hamilton? You know, I mean, anytime you come in, you know, as a freshman, you're just looking to get on the field any way you can. So, I mean, gonna get there, work hard, get in the weight room a little bit, see what happens, and hopefully be able to make an impact. Quint, you call it the revolution. Maybe living proof standing right next to me. Uh, you know, in Oregon, the state, uh, big time growth as the South gets a goal. Oregon in 2004, 29 teams played lacrosse. Guess how many now? They're up to 45. So they, they've almost doubled over the last five years in the state of Oregon. Davey Emila, formerly of Gilman School, gets on the board right here. The challenge for the South right now is their attack. And Emila, nice goal. That's where he belongs, in front of the goal. He's a crease attackman. Holman's going to be an off-ball shooter. Fanshawe also is going to be a crease attackman. So they don't have a natural carry guy right now. But you get a good look at what Emila does so well, is that's get open. Kind of reminds me of Joe Cummings, who was in this game last year, played at Loyola High School, and now is at Maryland. Good crease player who can catch and finish. This one is stabbed by the netminder Amato. Emil is on his way to Georgetown. Georgetown and Virginia had six player commitments from the guys on the field tonight in this Under Armour All-America lacrosse game. Hopkins five, Syracuse and Duke, each with four apiece. When you're talking Georgetown, it's a team, Coach Dave Yurick, that brings back almost their entire team intact. They missed the NCAA tournament two years in a row, but good luck making Georgetown at the attack position and getting some playing time. Craig Dowd. Morabito, Ryan Schuler at the midfield. You got Brancaccio and Scott Kosas. Zach Angel's a bright young talent. Throwing a guy like David Shriver. Uh, I got Georgetown in the top 10 next year, uh, next year, back in the NCAA tournament. Good team. He's Quint Kesnick. I'm Joe Beninati. Mark Dixon patrolling the sidelines for you. We're live on ESPNU. It's Under Armour All America Lacrosse game number four. This one originating from Towson, Maryland tonight. Game tied up at seven apiece. Chase Winter on the move, gets a screen. A weak bouncer eaten up by Amato, and now he'll start the counterattack. On the fly swiftly, it's Billy Connors. Long stick defender will settle into a six on six with Greeley. Playing catch with Zach Guy. One minute and 50 seconds away from our halftime, which will feature the